Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika, and with another edition of Politrix, honey. We don't trust none of them. We just choose the lesser of the two evils and made the worst one win. Okay, that's what we see. That's how, because that's where it go, child. Made the worst one win, child. The one, the one that can sell me the biggest story and, and halfway do the uh, right by me and mine. That's that's what we're doing right here, but. I wanted to come in and talk to you guys today about a little politics. President Donald Trump failed in his bid to undercut House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's impeachment by releasing an account of a call with the UK president. Top Democrats have concluded it showed clear evidence of him pressuring a foreign leader to for political advantage. While Republicans re immediately insisted as has Trump, that there was no explicit quid pro quo in the call, an argument that is certain to form the centerpiece of an anti-impeachment case. Democrats say it contained a, the building blocks of abuse of power against the president. Previously, some Democrat, Democrat lawmakers had been nervous before the White House released a transcript, fearing that Pelosi had overreached by seeing the details of the call and the whistleblower's complaint against Trump. But the White House transcripts show UK President uh, Zelensky pledging to buy more U.S. military equipment, at which point Trump asked him for a favor and asked him to look into corruption allegations for there were for which there is no public evidence against Democrat front runner Joe Biden and his son Hunter. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Swift tweeted that that transcript read like a classic mob shakedown. Democratic presidential candidates were quick to declare that this transcript was a smoking gun. The release of the transcript has launched a bore a full bore political war that will now wage through the impeachment process. Republican Lindsey, uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said Democrats would be insane to impeach Trump over a phone call. Trump 2020 campaign was quick to unleash its own offensive. Iowa GOP Senator Chuck Grassley also came to the president's defense, underlining how the political terrain over the months long impeachment fight has come to a has come fight to come has already been drawn. I read the transcripts in its entirety. It shows that there was no quo, uh, no quid pro quo. Grassley says. Democrats have argued that there uh, doesn't need to be a direct, direct warning from Trump that he was withhold the $400 million, million in military aid to the UK president as he did not open the investigation into Biden. The pressure appears to be implied in the transcript of the call is enough in itself to justify impeachment, they said. The White House transcript is only one element of the evidence the Democrats will process as they launch formal impeachment hearings. More context in the case will be available to lawmakers if the White House follows through on its undertaking to release the whistleblower's complaint. Trump finds himself at the center of a rare and historic showdown as only the fourth president in U.S. history to face the realistic threat of impeachment. There has been no such, there has been no president in history of our country who has been treated so badly as I have, Trump tweeted Wednesday morning. The Democrats are frozen with hatred and fear. They get nothing done. This should never be allowed to happen to another president. Witch hunt is what he calls it. Trump Trump does not want to be impeached and isn't welcoming this fight, sources tell CNN Jim Acosta and Caitlin Collins. Despite his defiant comments, he believes the process may help him politically. The president has worried about the possibility of being impeached for nearly a year, dating back to the weeks that followed the November 2018 midterms where Democrats won the House. A source close to the White House, who routinely speaks with Trump, said his decision to quickly authorize the release of the call transcript as well as the whistleblower's complaint are signs Trump weariness of entering the history books as an impeached president. According to some sources, Trump was preparing for a full day of meetings with foreign leaders at the United Nations General Assembly in New York when he paused to take a call to 
uh, to place a call to Pelosi Tuesday. Calls for his impeachment from her caucus has been ramping up, and Trump was hoping he could cool things down by speaking with her directly. The two discussed how the White House was at the time blocking the whistleblower's complaint from Congress, and it's unclear how the conversation ended. A short time later, Trump made the decision to release the uneradicated version of the call transcript. He has been hearing from aides and lawmakers why he shouldn't, but Trump wanted to undercut the argument from Democrats that he acted inappropriately on the call. When the announcement did little to change their minds, Trump told the people he would he couldn't believe it. He and aides are now preparing to respond and will argue that the Democrats have wildly overreached. Pelosi is taking a, hard, a huge gamble in using the ultimate constitutional instrument to wage political battle that is neither clearly defined nor guaranteed to end in a way that benefits, benefits her party. If impeachment fails, she could unwittingly cause Trump to consider his unrestrained presidency as he, as that has frequently buffeted congressional norms as validated, as she could pave the way to the Democrats' ultimate nightmare, a second Trump term. Still, there is no constitutional requirement for an impeachment inquiry to end a full vote in the House. Even if the House inquiry ends with the articles of impeachment, the majority vote in the chamber. No one believes that the Republican Senate will provide the two-thirds majority needed to oust Trump from office. So the impeachment collision will soon turn into a battle for America, America's political soul. How voters could react could decide who wins the White House in 2020 and set the country's course for years to come. Pelosi has already argued that Trump's public admission that he spoke to Zelensky about Biden in itself represents an abuse of power by a president seeking foreign help to win a re-election. The actions of Trump president's presidency reveal the dishonorable fact of the president's betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of our national security, betrayal of the integrity of our elections, Pelosi said in somber news conference on Tuesday. Therefore, today I am announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. Trump blasted the impeachment gambit as an attempt by Democrats to ruin his big trip to the United States General Assembly and decried their breaking news as a witch hunt garbage. Pelosi told her troops on Tuesday that they had reached a moment of truth, a comment that is true for her long career as the highest ranking female official in U.S. history as it is for the nation. It's unlikely both Trump and Pelosi can survive this power duel. Democrats hope that it will expose Trump as so unfit for office that it will prove fatal for his hopes of re-election. Trump hopes to ignite backlash against Pelosi and to use the impeachment drama to inspire and inspire his base and more moderate, sympathetic Republicans to a massive turnout in November of 2020. Ultimately, if he if the fight results in Trump's favor, the next election could throw up uh, the historic anomaly of the president who was impeached yet still won a second term. Only two presidents were impeached in the 223 years of U.S. history, Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton. Neither man was convicted by the Senate. Richard Nixon resigned after he was impeached in expectation that the Congress would oust him for his Watergate crimes. Now that there is a possibility impeachment could happen twice in the last 20 years, reflecting the fractured state of a nation split down the middle that has been further polarized by Trump's presidency. An impeachment inquiry is the ultimate showdown between the House of Democrats, the House Democrats who believe that they were handed power in midterm election to constrain Trump, a presidency that has repeatedly ripped Democrat norms and tested the Constitution itself. At the United Nations, Trump put forward an alternative retrospective justification for delaying aid to the Ukraine ahead of his call to Zelensky on July the 25th. He said he wanted to wait for European nations to contribute to their fair share. Later, the president insisted in a tweet that his decision to provide declassified, 
uneradicated script opposed to senior aides, which showed that there was no quid pro quo. You will see it was very friendly and totally an appropriate call. No pressure, and unlike Joe Biden and his son, no quid pro quo, this is nothing more than a continuation of the greatest and most destructive witch hunt in all time, Trump tweeted. In an appearance in Washington, Pelosi warned the president is making lawlessness a virtue in our country. The House Speaker did not specifically commit to an impeachment inquiry in the appearance and at, in the appearance and the possibility that the facts will not marry eventually a full House vote on the question. She shifted her position as a political torrent changed the shape of the impeachment debate in Washington. A number of moderate swing state Democrats who she had been trying to protect moved to the impeachment side of the argument. She said that the nature of Trump's alleged offense was clear, a factor that may not have changed a factor that may have changed the political equation. This is the most understandable to the public. It is really important to know this. There is no requirement that there be a quid pro quo in conversation, she said. You don't ask foreign governments to help us in our election. That's why we tried to stop with Russia. It's wrong. Pelosi told her caucus that the impeachment would center around six House committees already investigating the president. It would be up to the Judiciary Committee eventually to decide whether to advocate articles of impeachment. If the full House votes to simply simple majority to impeach the president, his trial then takes place in the Senate. There is so far no suggestion, however, that the staunch Republican support for Trump in the GOP-controlled chambers is waning. That means a two-thirds majority that would be needed to convict the president on articles of impeachment to oust him from office looks at this point unlikely to materialize. Like, like Pelosi and Biden also seems to be calculating his position. As the subject of Trump's, Trump's attacks and the Democratic frontrunner, he is in a new, unique position in cascading drama. In an on-camera appear appearance apparently meant to project presidential gravitas and temperament, the former pres vice president said that if Trump failed to provide information about the case, he would leave lawmakers with no choice. Denying the Congress the information which it is constitutionally entitled to and obstructing its efforts to investigate actions is not the conduct of an pre American president. Is the abuse of power, Trump, uh, Biden said. Donald Trump will leave Congress, in my view, no choice but to initiate impeachment. That would be a tragedy, but a tragedy of his own making, Biden said. Now, basically what I'm getting out of this is he did abuse power. He tried to stronghold this man. He told that man, President Zelensky, that if he did not, in fact, do the investigation into, namely, um, Hunter Biden, that he would, you know, probably make it, you know, hard for him, meaning withdraw aid. I get what he's saying when he says that other foreign countries need to do their fair share. But what they do ain't got nothing to do with what we're supposed to be doing and what we have agreed to do for the Ukraine. This was just another example and maybe the ultimate example of how this man runs amok in the White House. Now, do I think that he will be impeached? Mm, probably not. Because there is 35% of America that stands by Trump regardless of what he says. So you're going to have to really do something to swing that vote. And I just don't think that it will come to fruition. What I do hope out of all of this, that he realizes that he cannot abuse his power as president of the United States. Someone said to me down in the comment section that he's just a face, but it's powerful corporations and families that control the government. And I would tend to agree with that. However, there are, as, as much as that is true, there are people who really, truly love this country and the foundation to which it was built upon. And they are staunch supporters of the Constitution. Something that it appears that our president 
does not seem to have that same feeling toward. He tried to, in my opinion, run this country in that situation the same way he has dealt with businesses, his own personal businesses in the past. Now, some would say that is shady dealings, but that shady dealings has no real room in government, even though we know it happens sometimes. He went too far is what I'm seeing. And unless they really can dot their I's and cross their T's and convince the Senate to go along completely, Donald Trump will get a slap on the wrist. But it also will set a precedence that you cannot do whatever it is you want to do without there being any backlash, without you jeopardizing the position that you seem to be so proudly upholding. That's what I feel like is going to happen. I don't think this man will be impeached, but I think he needs to understand that we have laws, rules, regulations, and a constitution that govern our, our, our country. And being called the, the nation leader may sound good on paper, and it might even sound good rolling off your tongue, but you are still, sir, governed by something. And that is the constitution of this great United States. And so with that being said, I look forward to the months and the days ahead to find out exactly what they're going to do about this. Because, again, I don't think he's going to be impeached. But the fact that they're doing an inquiry, they right. If this inquiry don't go right, it could actually be what helps him win re-election. And that ain't what we want. But hopefully they can put out enough evidence that changes people's minds so that you make the decision that you need to make on November 2020 when we go back to the polls to elect a new head of, head of this country. And let's hope this time that everybody understands that your voice and your vote count. Find out. It's not hard to find out. Politics may seem like it's a bunch of big words with no, uh, with no real meaning. It took me a while to get to a point where I could understand it. And I totally get it. I know the game that we're playing. However, I don't like the fact that Trump seems to think that he can use his position to stronghold people. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that he feels that it's okay to send, uh, to try to get rid of illegal immigrants. Just cold-heartedly ripping them. I'm still not past last summer when I was sitting here watching those kids be detained in these little, I forgot what you call them, y'all put it down in the pen. But them little stations, they were separated from family and everything. Them kids were scared. And those weren't the best conditions. I still remember this man trying to oust people who had been in this country for years over that DACA situation. I haven't forgotten about any of that. This man has made a mockery of this country since he's been there. He thinks it's a joke. I don't know if the man suffered from all time or what's going on with him. But something in the buttermilk ain't clean. And something in them brain cells ain't twerking right. Or is he all about self and cares nothing about anybody? That's the question. But we shall see what will come of this and um be on the lookout this weekend i will be dropping some videos concerning the amber geiger uh case uh, the trial that's going on i won't be doing day by day coverage because i got a job too and i can't do it but i will you know i will take a look at what's been going on and i'll come in and provide you guys with some commentary on it and as always in my commentary I weigh in my thoughts and opinions you know what I'm saying so we are gonna see what's gonna happen with this impeachment inquiry don't look good for your boy Donald Trump I'm telling you don't look good but it don't look grim either it don't look like he on he in his last days I don't think the man is going to be impeached but I think that they are doing enough to shake him up so that he understands the position that he has now is it a little too late no, because he's, he's running for re-election. So that gives everybody a fresh slate to really take a look at this man. Put aside your bigotry. Put aside your racism. Think about what this man is doing and what this country really stands for. And tell me if they, go side, if they coincide with each other. I think not. Anyway.
Y'all remember the death of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to rate the video ratings. Get me recognized on the YT Streets, child. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this entire crazy situation involving President Trump and the impeachment inquiry that has now been set in stone to start at the hands of Pelosi, the House Speaker. We want to know what you think. I really do want to know what you guys think about it. And do you agree that you don't think that impeachment will happen, but this will kind of shake him up a little bit? Because I'm telling you, he nervous, child. He nervous. He don't like this. But do he think that he will be removed? I don't. I think they just doing a power play to make him realize you going a little too far, bro. You going a little too far. If you have not become a love thing today by subscribing to this channel or my Lady Nika Live backup channel, please do so today. Also tap your notification bells so that each and every time that I go live from this channel or drop a pre-recorded video, you guys can come over and join in the conversations. Thank you again for your continued support. American Horror Story will come up on this channel on Thursday at some point. Just be on the lookout. That's why I say subscribe, girl, and hit your notification so you'll know when it's there because I know you want me to talk about it, and I'm going to get around to it for you. I will see you guys on the next upload. Have a great remainder to your Wednesday.